afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Field 3 here at Hopkinton High School. It is Hopkinton Middle School football on HCAM. Tom Nappy joined by Mike Terosian, John Ritz on camera, and it's a beautiful afternoon for some football, Mike. You can't beat this weather as the captain's out on the field I right now. I tell you, now. normally when you come down to this field, it's 10 degrees colder, and it's about 20 miles an hour windier. But I tell you, we have a perfect afternoon. We have a perfect day. No wind. Beautiful sunshine. Uh, the fields are all being used. And here we are, middle school football at David Hughes Stadium, field three. This is going to be their first time playing. Usually their first time playing is when they play on varsity. You know, a lot of these kids, a lot of talent on these two teams. Uh, you might see some of them in, in the varsity program I'm sure we will. next year with the way the season has gone. And, Mike, i got to say, it's been a tremendous first season of Hopkinton Middle School football, and you can really see some talent that I think is going to work their way up through the ranks. I tell you, this inaugural season for middle school football has been great. I mean, Ashland's had it for a little while, but for Hopkinton, uh, Coach Weber uh, bringing this team alive and bringing middle school football to the forefront of uh, the rest of uh, Hill of Football. All right, well, Ashland is going to receive the opening kick. And I think we are just about ready to go here at David M. Hughes Stadium, the final regular season game for the Hillers Middle School football program in their first season. Pretty tremendous. They lost to Ashland the last time these two teams met at Ashland Middle School, so they're looking mm -hmm. for some revenge right, right. here today. Is set to kick it away is number 80. Who I don't have an 80. You got it written yeah. in, but we don't have a name. We'll have to uh, find and, uh, out who that is. Is that or somebody lost their shirt? And I, belie nope. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's Paul Lisher who does the kicking. All right, and we got a couple, uh, couple uh, non-rusted players that are probably going to go over and run the chains. I'm guessing they don't look like they're in a hurry to do it. Yeah, perhaps we have some call-ups for this game. <laughs> what from sixth grade? <laughs> <laughs> From Pop Warner? That's uh, right. Uh, American Youth Football? <laughs> they, yeah, they went down to Pop Warner. <laughs> they, got some they, went down, they went down to Fruit Street. They've been scouting on Fruit Street it, it's at a, the American Youth Football, the uh, Fighting Irish team. It's expanded rosters, right? Yeah, why not? So oh. the Hills will do the kickoff from the 40. And it looks like uh, back to receive for uh, the Clockers is uh, Jake Caveney, and it looks like, is it Mason Dean over there on the far side? I believe you are correct. And uh, we should That's mention that uh, Scott Soderberg, a former Hiller softball coach, is an assistant yeah. coach with the Ashland program. Right. Certainly good to see him today. He won't be returning to the softball program due to other commitments he has going on, but he certainly did a tremendous job with the Hiller softball program. He did. And he led him to the postseason every year he coached him. All right, here we go. We're ready to get this game going. And it's a low sailing kickoff up the far side to about the 22. And we'll get a whistle right off the bat here. That was and they're going to mark him down. Yeah, that was Chris Dudley over there. It was 34, not 84. And uh, Chris Dudley there, he put his knee down. Yep. That'll do it. And uh, we also got Mike Whalen as one of the officials out yep. there today. Hop Hopkins uh, famed Mike Whalen. He does, a great, he does a great job uh, officiating games. He does everything. He's into the field hockey. He does the football. Does some he, baseball. He does baseball. He does, uh, he's, he's everywhere. The Babe Ruth in, uh, in high school. Babe Ruth in high school, I see him. And he certainly uh, loves doing this as well. Loves uh, getting to see the high school talent as well as the middle school talent. As Pat Dwinnell's the quarterback for Ashland. Cannon for an arm. Hopkinton is certainly going to have to watch out for Dwinnell's. And he's going to line up with a back to either side, and he will hand it off to the right back. That's Liam Fleming up the far side, and he's brought down after a gain of three or four. Leading the way on the tackle, that was Rocco, Devin, or Devin Canty. Devin Canty, yeah, Devin Canty there. He read that play right from the start, and he followed him along and was able to make that tackle, holding him only to three yards. So that brings up a second and seven. 
And I have to say, the thing I like about them playing on this field, Mike, is they got the hash marks, so we can uh, get we a better idea of the yardage. Not only do we have hash marks, but we got pretty decent lines throughout, left over from last Friday's uh, tilt against Milton. Right. Dwinnells now with an empty back set, and it's going to be an end around here. Getting the call is Dudley, and Dudley bobbled it, but he was able to take it up for a few yards. Close to the first down, but I believe he's just short. Dudley did a, a great job grabbing control of that ball. He didn't have it right from the start, but it took him a few touches before he uh, was able to pull it in, and he was able to hold on to it through the tackle. And they do give him the first down, so that gets the chains moving for the clockers. Of course, both of these teams hoping to end on a high note, but as I say every game, Mike, it's not really about the win-loss column in middle school football. That's it's right. about developing your skills and getting ready to play at the high school level if you want to continue as it's a keeper by Dwinnells. Up the middle he goes, eluding tackle after tackle, and then he's brought down at around the 42-43 by Wyatt Stevens. Yeah, Wyatt Stevens was the third person to touch him, and he was able to keep control and bring him down. I'll tell you, Wyatt Stevens and Isaiah Caruvilla, those are the two uh, hillers to look out for at the high school level. I think they got a pretty good future in front of them football-wise. Let me tell you something. About covering this middle school team has been really a lot of fun this year. Normally, sub varsity games are not filmed because it is instructional. But uh, Coach Weber was really uh, into getting this covered. Dwinnells rolls out, throws up the sideline, has the target, hauled in. And it was dropped, but was he down? I believe he was down. I think that was Jake Shaw on the reception. And I think the official saying that he was down. And yeah, that was Jacob Shore, number 29 for Ashland. And no, they're gonna give it to Hopkinton. So a fumble recovery by the Hillers. And Hopkinton will bring their offense out, and that's exactly what you need against this potent Ashland offense. Yeah, Hopkinton is definitely hungry. They did not like that loss over in Ashland last month, and they're looking for a little payback right now. But adding on to your point, Mike, it certainly has been a lot of fun to cover this team, and we're glad we had the opportunity to do it. And I think the kids really enjoyed it as well. Oh yeah, who, who, I, I don't know if it's the kids or the parents that like it more when they get to <laughs> right, watch, the parents. watch them play on television. Especially, you know, these are 3.30 games. You know, parents are still working and they don't get to see it till later. Exactly. Wyatt Stevens in at quarterback. He's going to line up out of the gun with a back to his left. Two receivers either side. Keeps. And he will keep this one and try to take it up the far side. And he's quickly dragged down, making the tackle was Jeff Britt. Yeah, that was just short of a horse collar tackle too. Those things are dangerous these days. They certainly are. I'll tell you, you see uh, some middle school programs just starting out, and, well, it's kind of rough for them, but for this Hopkinton program just starting out this year, it looks like they've been around for a century with how experienced these kids out there look. Well, you have to compliment the feeding from the uh, Pop One and the American Youth Football teams that really have, uh, that, you know, really complement this. Stevens is gonna hand this one off, run up the middle, short gain there by Will Masterson. He might even lost one on that one. And that was uh, good awareness there by the Ashland defense, taking him right down. That'll bring up third down for the Hillers, and they got about five or six to go. So what will they do here? Will they try to open up the passing game, perhaps? This Ashland defense, they were very good against the Hillers' run attempts the last time these two teams met over at Ashland Middle School. So I think uh, Coach Webb knows he's going to have to open up the playbook a little bit here. Stevens out of the gun, and he's going to pitch it over to Masterson. Masterson has some speed, but catching up to him rather quickly was Hunter Roby. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Hillers. Oh, that was, uh, that was uh, Jake Caveney. Jake Caveney uh, with the uh, open field tackle, 89. Right? I thought it was 91. But right. we'll, we'll check the video. We'll check the video <laughs> later. I could be wrong. 
Well, Hiller's set to punt it away. Back to return is Jake McGreal. Pretty good punt there. It's going to sail back to the 40 and take a Hiller's roll all the way past the 30 towards the 25. And some pretty good distance on that one. Yeah, it's nice to uh, to get a nice punt off like that. This is a, a perfect punt for uh, middle school level. So the Clockers offense will take the field job well done by the Ashland defense after the Hillers fumble recovery. The Ashland offense led by Pat Dwinnells. And he did a uh, tremendous job against the Hillers the last time these two teams met, had a couple touchdown passes. He's gonna line up with a back to his left. And a couple of receivers to each side, takes the snap looking to pass. Plenty of time. And he's gonna Plenty air this one out, has a target and it's dropped by Jay Caveney. Well, he was hoping that Caveney would have caught that one and Exploded in the open field, but it just slipped out of his hands. Yeah, that was right into the hands of Caveney, and like you said, it just slipped out. Good blocking up front by Ashland. So that brings up second and 10. I'm very impressed by the uh, this year here by the passing game of Ashland. And Pat Dwinnell's, I said it to Coach Soderberg, he has a big arm. He's going to line it up once again in the gun. He has three receivers to his right. He's going to keep this one. There he goes. Trying to uh, get up the far sideline. Eludes one tackler and another wow. first down. Can he get into open field? Just dragging defenders, and he's pushed out of bounds right around the 45. It was still had five hillers on him, and he kept pumping those feet. It was a good job by Christian Pereira and John Vaughn staying with him. But that is uh, the type of strength that Pat Dwinnells has. He's just a tremendous athlete. So it's first and 10 for Ashland. They have the ball at the 47. Huddle up, talk things over. They certainly uh, have a pretty expansive uh, playbook for this level. Dwinnells is going to hand this one off. The Hillers defense is right there to bring down the ball carrier. That was Liam Fleming on the carry. Devin Canty leading the way on the tackle. That brings up second down. They actually lost a few yards there, so that's going to make it second and about 13 to go for Ashland. Let's see what Pat Dwinnells and the Ashland offense have up their sleeve here. Well, Takes the snap, and that whistle was behind us. That was behind us. Here for a moment. Wait a second, what's that? He's going to keep this one, pushes one tackler to the ground, and then he's wrapped up by a number of defenders, and it'll be stopped right around midfield by Wyatt Stevens and Isaiah Caruvilla and a host of other hillers. So if I notice, it's taken at least three hillers to uh, to knock down Dwinnells. And still not knock him down, just push him backwards. Well, I'll tell you, the hillers certainly took some notes from last game because last game they were sending one, maybe two defenders in on them, and they figured out towards the end of the game that they need more than that. More than they that, have right. to just surround them, and that's what they're doing this game. So they're holding them to... Not humongous gains like he had early on sure. the last time these two teams met. As Low Dwinnells snap, takes the snap. Time. And he has a wide open target. That's hauled in by Jake Caveney. There he goes. He's off going to the end zone. No one's going to catch him. Touchdown, Ashland. Andrew Gavin looked like he was on his tail, but he just could not pick up enough speed to make the tackle before the end zone. That's about a 50-yard touchdown reception to Jake Caveney. And just like that, the clockers on the board here in the first quarter. It looks like they might go for two. Again, Dwinnells with plenty of pass protection, had plenty of time to throw that ball, and uh, having the open receiver, bingo. Dwinnells 
Mel's out there, huddles up his offense. Yeah, looks like they're gonna go for two here. Takes a low snap, picks it up, and he's gonna try to take this one himself, it looks like. Up the far side he goes, and he got in. Wow, just barely. Just barely, right? Just barely right. made it in. Isaiah Curuvilla got to him and tried to push him out at the one, but Dwinell's just had that extra little push forward that allowed him to propel into the end zone to make it eight to nothing. Very impressed with this Ashland offense this afternoon. You can see from the difference between their first game, we didn't follow them at all during the season, but look at the difference already from that first game to today. Uh, much more mature Clarker team. It certainly is. So Ashland will kick it off to the Hillers and we'll see if Hopkinton can get something brewing offensively. Well, there's a handful of players on both teams that I'll be looking for at the high school level in the near future. And you know Dwinnells will be one of them. I oh, certainly will. I think for the Hillers, you got some talent with Isaiah Caruvilla, Wyatt Stevens. Sure. Will Masterson has some speed. You got Sokol on the team. I think he'll do all right. These are two of the better middle school teams in the division, for sure. And over end it goes, back to the 25, and it will be returned up the near side. And on the tackle, that was Jake Caveney. On the return, it was Paul Lisher. So the Hillers offense will come out with pretty good field position, working from their own 35. Wyatt Stevens is going to lead the offense at quarterback. He's going to line it up with a pair of receivers each side and a back to his left. Takes the snap, play action. He's going to take it up the far side on the keeper. There he goes across midfield and a good gain there, enough for a first down. Nice little block to help him out by, oh, he's not even, oh there he is, uh, Andrew Gavin. Andrew Gavin gave a nice little block. To give him the extra few yards before he could run out. Well, speed is what it's all about for these offenses. Got to get the ball to your, your speed, your speedy guys that have strength and can elude tacklers. It looks like we have an injured player. So will the trainers check on the injured player? We're gonna take a timeout. Ashland leading Hopkinton, eight nothing on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. All right, a stoppage due to an injury. Brendan McGowan, a little shook up for the Hillers. He appears to be okay, walking off under his own power. Certainly a good sign. Hopkinton gets back up to the line. It is first and 10 for the Hillers after a big gain by Isaiah Caravilla. Tom Nappy, Mike Tarosian, happy to be with you this afternoon for Hopkinton Middle School football. John Ritz on camera. And here we go, last game of the regular season. And we're gonna have a reverse here. It's dropped by Caravilla and he's taken down in the backfield. He was lucky to retrieve the ball, but 
It was a good save, but a loss of yardage for the Hillers. Chris Dudley in on the tackle for Ashland. Tell you, those double reverses at this age level is not easy to do. It certainly isn't. I think that's a uh, play they might have saw in the Bills Patriots game the other day. Yeah, I think I saw that too. Bills trying all kinds of fancy things to try to fool that Patriots defense, but it didn't work out so well. <laughs> As we know. Of course, it's almost impossible to fool Bill Belichick. As Stevens is going to line it up out of the gun, back to his right. Pair receivers each side, takes the snap. He's looking upfield, he's gonna air this one out and it's incomplete. I thought I saw a little pass interference, but no flag. No, he, that was definitely uncatchable. I think Rovilla was trying to reach around the defender. Rovilla was uh, trying to rush upfield to reel that one in a little too far in front of him. It'll bring up uh, third down for the Hillers. Third and long. Backed up all the way to the about the 43. That's why it Stevens runs back out to the huddle, and that's the kind of play he's going to need here to get that first down. Something long upfield. And they do have all the speedy guys out there. Isaiah Curvilla lined up in the left slot. Stevens set to take the snap. Takes the snap under pressure. Rolls to his right, throws up field, and it's just over the reach of Isaiah Kiruvilla. That'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, it wasn't thrown too hard. It was just a bit high. Yeah, just a tad high there. So now the Hillers will likely punt it away. Back to return for Ashland is Chris Dudley. Paul Lisher in there to punt it away. Snap and the punt, pretty good one. It takes a hop at the 36 and a Hopkinton roll all the way back towards the 20. Ends up being a really nice punt there by Lisher. You know, I just always feel that you should just try to pick that up. At this level, pick it up and go. Right. What's it going to hurt? <laughs> you don't have that kind of speed and power coming down from your special teams to uh, to warrant a fair catch. But yeah, uh, take a hop, pick it up, give it a try. Well, I, guess, lose. I guess it depends who's closest to you on the Hopkinton side. Yeah, I suppose. But that's just me. Let's see what the Ashland offense does here. Pat Twinell is going to line it up in the gun. The running back is Adrian Bremenkamp. And he's going to fake the handoff here, roll to his right. Here he goes. He's going to take off. And he is going to get close to the first down before being pushed out of bounds by Wyatt Stevens. It's one thing with this clocker offense, you know, having the, the quarterback like to an L's that has no problem running with the ball when he has to. He doesn't look to run it every time. He's not trying to make every single play. But if there's no play happening down there, he's got no problem at all keeping it. Yep, and he certainly has a whole lot of speed. So it'll bring up second down and about three to go. Twinell's gonna line it up out of the gun once again, hands it off. And there's a flag. That's going to be a face mask against the Hillers. Yeah, that looked like a face mask. You're right. There's a clear face mask there. And that's going to help out Ashland, who's brought down for a loss, but can't touch the face mask. So that'll give Ashland a new set of downs. Yeah, it should move that to around the 40. Yep. It's going to move it up 41 to the 43. 43? 15 yards. So Ashland moves up 15 yards. And obviously this is a level where they're learning. So 
You don't see a That's whole right. lot of flags, right. but when there's a clear face mask like that. They have to call it. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of stuff they let go. Like you'll see, you might see a little uh, jump on the offensive line, but you know. Dwayne Ellis is going to take this one himself. There he goes up the middle, eludes one tackler, another, and he's gone, and he's gone. He's gone. into he's... open field. There he goes, marching up the far sideline. See you later. Touchdown, Ashland. When he broke that first tackle, and he just, you know, gave the high knees over uh, two opponents. He was gone after that. He was like a rocket. A Great speed. A 57-yard touchdown run by Pat Dwinnells. And it's 14 to nothing, Ashland. They went for two on their first touchdown, made it eight nothing, and they had six here, and it looks like they're gonna try to add another two here. Well, usually at this stage, you don't have the most reliable field goal kickers, so that's why you see a lot of uh, two yeah, point I, conversion I have not seen a I have not seen a uh, point after kick uh, this season at all. Well, Lisher, I believe, made a few, if I'm not mistaken. I have not seen one myself. Ah. <laughs> That's true. You've only been to a couple games. Thank you. Thank you for my – oh! <laughs> it's when Els rolling to his right, did not see the defender coming up on his blind side, and he's brought down. He did get rid of it, but two-point conversion, no good. Yeah, Caravilla was right in there and did not give up. That was a nice job by Caravilla. That keeps the score 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. Ashland set to kick off, but I believe we're gonna have a. I believe that's the end of the first quarter. I did if I'm not, not see mistaken. the signal. Let's see where they place that ball. We'll try to confirm, but no, it looks like they're still going over there, so it's still. Yeah, all right. Well, in any case. Unless he heads the other direction. He's standing on the 50 now. <laughs> which way is he going to go? Yeah, he's all right. The point to left and right. All right, which way are they going to walk? Well, so if it's the end of the quarter, Ashton should be on the uh, This is so left tough without a clock, you know? It certainly this is, is. This is brutal. All right, well, in any case, it's 14 nothing. <laughs> Long stoppage here. <laughs> I'd assume that's the end of the quarter. I don't know. We'll, we'll see where he places the ball. Well, we'll figure out where he places the ball, but for now, we'll take a short timeout. It's Hopkinton Middle School Football on H Camp. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. And Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. And I want to be Camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. I watch HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. We love HCAM TV. Woo! All right, we just got the official word. It is time to start the second quarter. The Ashland Clockers leading the Hopkinton Hillers 14 0. It's Hopkinton Middle School football on HCAM. Tom Nappy alongside Mike Tarosia and John Ritz, our cameraman, here on this beautiful afternoon. Final game of the regular season for Hopkinton Middle School football. What a tremendous first season it has been. Certainly a great learning experience for these kids. As Pat Dwinnell is set to kick it away. That's right, because normally these kids at this age here, they, they get a year or two off before they can play up in the uh, freshman, uh, freshman league. So it's nice that they get to keep going, seventh and eighth graders. Right, and I believe there's some camps and programs that they can go to but absolutely nothing like this though no and this is gonna sail up the far side and roll out of bounds and that should draw a flag there it is a legal procedure yeah I thought Litcher was gonna pick it up before it went out but uh he's yeah it was, wasn't worth it he kept it so but now they get the choice take it or kick it again and it looks like they're gonna take it there right 25 is not bad 30 27 so they, yeah, would be, they would move it, I believe, uh, five yards up. Yeah. So there you go, 32. Why not? So the Hillers bring their offense out. And hold everything. Maybe we will re-kick this. Well, I, think, uh, I, thought they were, I thought they signaled. Oh, all right. We're going to re-kick it. <laughs> Hopkinton wants the re-kick. 
Well, they want to return it. I, I don't blame them. Why not? Blame them. Yeah. You get a big return, yeah. Big return or even a touchdown. Back to return on the right side. You got Isaiah Curvilla. The next to him, I believe that is Paul Lisher. Just funny. It just looked like they were marching back five yards from where it went out. But there it is on the 35. So Dwinnells will kick it away once again. And he's going to have an onside type of kick here. And it is covered up at around the 32. Nice job by Lisher. Which is where it would have been if they just kept it. <laughs> so everything works out for the Hillers. I tell you. Nothing lost, nothing gained. That's okay. right. Yeah, you never know. It's a gamble, right? <laughs> it's a gamble. So the Hillers will have the ball at the 33. It'll give them a little progress there. Well, a little uh, injury report on uh, Brendan McGowan. Uh, the eighth grade, he doesn't look like he's returning as I see the trainer grabs the crutches out of the vehicle. So um, I don't think we'll see him returning uh, for any more of this game. Well, we certainly hope he's okay. Yep. Hopefully it's all precautionary. And in there at quarterback, it's Stevens. Wyatt Stevens takes the snap back to pass. Oh, under pressure, hold. rolls to his left. And he gets rid of it, ha finds a target. It's Kuruvilla. There goes Kuruvilla up well, the near side. Right and he wow. eludes one tackler, just runs right through him. And then he's taken down by Jeff Britt. But a huge gain there for the Hillers, and what an athletic play by Caravilla. Great run. When you keep those legs moving like that, you can almost go through a wall, and he did. The ball is going to be marked at the Ashland 30-yard line, so a huge gain there. I don't know if that 38-yard gain. Don't know if that little hold I saw in the backfield helped at all, but we'll take it. I'm a homer. I can say it. <laughs> Stevens is going to line it up out of the gun. With the back to his left, that is uh, Christian Pereira, who's now going to line up to his right. Three receivers also lined up to the right side. Takes the snap. He's going to roll to the right. Under pressure. There he goes. Taking on off. His tail. And he is going to take it out of bounds along the far side, close to the first down. Looks like he might have enough. Yeah, Hunter Roby was right on his tail, and he was able to uh, elude him and run it out of bounds. Big gain there for the Hillers, moves the chains. Second straight, first down, and this offense, they have something going. But I tell you, that was one heck of a block by Christian Pereira. I mean, he got laid out, but <laughs> if that block wasn't there, we would not have the uh, first down that we have right now. Certainly wouldn't. Took it over the... Strong side, and Ashland saw those receivers lined up there, so that's where all the defenders were. So nice job by Pereira. Stevens is going to line it up in the pistol this time. Perhaps a little confusion here. Yeah, a little we're confusion. going to get a timeout. Yeah, yeah, Hills have to take the timeout. There was a little confusion. So timeout on the field. We're in the second quarter. It's Ashland leading Hopkinton 14 and nothing. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Off the timeout, we are ready to go. The Hillers, they have something going offensively. Let's see if they can keep working their way in Ashland territory. Looks like they're going with trips left. Stevens in there at quarterback, and he's going to line it up in the pistol. Takes the snap, pitches it to his left, and it's going to be a run up the middle. That's Devin Canty on the run for some good yardage there. Kitty's a big boy, and he did drill his way through that line. He did not have the widest of uh, openings, but he was able to drill his way through. He certainly was. And pretty close to the first down. It looks like he's maybe a couple yards shy. So second and about 
two to go for the Hillers. They're marked at the Ashland 11. We think. <laughs> yeah, we think. <laughs> Stevens is lined up in the pistol once again. Canty to his left, and it's going to be another run up the middle. This time the Ashland defense ready for it up front, and Canty gets nowhere. Good stop there. I believe that was Roby getting the wrap. You know, Tom, as I look and I point to John over here to our right, we see the uh, Hill of Asi team practicing on the turf field. That is a first for our Hillers to be able to practice on turf, which they play most of their games on. Right. They only play their home games and they practice on grass all the time. Now they have a chance to actually practice on turf and give them a chance when they uh, play Friday night. And if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe Milton is turf. Milton is turf, yeah. The, there's hardly any schools left that have grass. Hopkins is one of, well, Hopkins is the last one on the TVL, but they uh, definitely uh, part of only a few schools in our area, in our division, that has grass. It's going to be another run here. Stevens is going to keep this one up the near side. He goes oh. towards the end zone, and he was going to be marked out of bounds. Six. At around seven, the six or seven. Yeah, I believe you're right in that area. So a lot of his uh, teammates were hoping that he'd be marked at the one there, but he did have a little. He did try to tiptoe. He, he did try yep. to tiptoe it in, but he just, you know, inertia takes over. You know. Right. Hiller's in business, though. It is. Yep, seven. It is first and goal. So. They have a big opportunity here to get back in this game. Stevens is going to line it up in the pistol once again. Canty is to his right, pair receivers to each side. Takes the snap, he's gonna pitch it to Canty. There goes Canty. Up the middle he goes, and he stopped short of the end zone, but he did pick up a couple. Yeah, Canty turned back in. I thought he was gonna go for the outside. He had plenty of room for it. But he decided to turn it, thinking he was going to trick his defender. That was Liam Fleming on the stop for Ashland. So now it's second and goal. And I want to say the ball is marked around the three. Yeah, looks like the three. So second and goal from the three. Can the Hillers find the end zone for their first time today? It's going to be Stevens lining up with Masterson to his left. Well, Masterson, eighth grader with a good amount of speed as well. They go pistol once again. He's going to roll to his left. He's under pressure. Oh, he's and trouble. he's brought down in the backfield. Immediate pressure by the Ashland defense. And Patrick Deslaurers brings him to the ground. Pat Deslaurers, nice play there up front, just bursting through. The Hopkinton offensive line. Yeah, he had a little help from uh, Timmy Connors, too. So now it is third and goal from about the eight. There's a loss of around five. So what will they do here? Will they go for a pass, or will they just try to run it once again? I tell you, they do well with their pitches. They just need to, uh, they just need to give them some blocking. Yeah, they still have a couple cracks at it because obviously uh, you're going to go for it on fourth down in oh, this situation. Oh, without a doubt, you have to. Okay, and the Ashland defense keep the Hillers scoreless. Stevens is going to line it up with Masterson to his left. A pair of receivers to each side. We have motion from left to right. Chips right. Now it's uh, Seamus Murphy lined up on the right side. Here goes Stevens. He's gonna, keep. He's gonna keep it here, takes it to the near side, and he is in the backfield right now. He's able to oh, elude a couple look tacklers. The blockers. Look at all the blockers he's got. Right, he takes it all the way to the far side, into the end zone. And he ran about 60 yards Changing for an eight direction. yard touchdown. Wow, he <laughs> saw, he was all clogged up over there and decided, hey, you know, let's go the other way. And he had a curtain of blockers on his right-hand side. They look like what Mitch Trubisky did to the Patriots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wyatt Stevens, an eight-yard touchdown. 
Gets the Hillers on the board. It's 14 to six, Ashland. And Hopkinton, I believe, is going to attempt two here. Or will they bring out the kicker? They do have uh, uh, one of their kickers out there. Is he out there? Maybe they'll try a uh, Doug Flutie. Now they're going to think about it here. Yeah. They're going to talk about it. I was thinking maybe Doug Flutie drop kick. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How many years has that been? <laughs> <laughs> so timeout called. It's Ashland 14, Hopkinton 6. We got a good one here. It's Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. Off the timeout, it looks like the Hiller is going to go for the extra point here. And we still have to get a name here on number 80. Not quite sure. Yeah, we'll do that is. at halftime. We'll run down there. All right, we'll get a look at his kicking abilities. Can he make this a seven point game? Snap, kick, it's low, and that is going to be no good. So it's going to remain a 14 to 6 game in favor of Ashland. But the Hillers finding the end zone for their first time today. Wyatt Stevens leading the way at a big 38 yard run and then capped off the drive with an eight yard touchdown run. Pretty impressive uh, job by the Hillers offense there, Mike. I tell you, the, the offense uh, is looking good. They are uh, eluding tackles. Uh, this extra point, uh, the kick, uh, you know. Need some practice. Say, yeah, they, they get just a little practice. I thought the uh, two-pointer would be the way to go, but what do I know, you know. Hey, I probably couldn't kick that any better, so. No, not at all. <laughs> but uh, he, did have, he did have enough power behind it. It just had no height. And uh, we... We've seen him kick before. He know, certainly it, has some power. Was the laces in on that one? I don't know. I can't. I couldn't tell from here. <laughs> laces in, Dan. Laces in, Dan. <laughs> laces out. All right. So <laughs> the Hillers will uh, kick again, and our number 80 in the pink will uh, will do the kickoff. I yeah. Well, we got to get a name. You had a good uh, kickoff to start off the game. We'll see what he does here, but the Hillers, they got some momentum going, some well-needed momentum. And once the Hillers found the end zone and the first time these two teams met, it was really a chess match. It was both teams going back and forth offensively. All right. So we'll see what Ashland has in store here. They certainly, I'm sure, want some revenge as that was a low kick. Returned for a few yards by Liam Fleming, and Ashland will have pretty good field position to start. They'll work from their own 45 or make it the 47. 47, yeah, I'll take 47. The 50, yeah, so you got, <laughs> look at that, the 50 is like on the 48 right now. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's, uh... oh, hey, it's middle school football. That's right. It is what it is. We got no clock, we got no uh, referees helping us out. It's all for fun. Yeah, and that's what this really is about. Oh, it's about building your skills. allowing these kids to have fun. And that's what they oh, should do here. Look at this. Hello. Dwayne Ells. Under pressure, though. He's going to get rid oh, of it. it. And that is intercepted. No, it's oh, nearly it's intercepted. Oh. It was dropped. Oh, that was right into the chest of the defender, and he's not happy about it. And that was Seamus Murphy on defense who nearly had the interception. I'll tell you what, that was He a, was right there, he was right underneath it. Well, that was a, that was <laughs> a bad decision by Dwayne oh, Ellis. Oh boy. When, when you're getting rid of it, you throw it out of bounds. He was way out of the box, so yeah, it wouldn't be intentional you, grounding. Throw, throw to his coach or something, you right. know? Don't throw it. Throw, throw it to the sidelines. Don't throw it down the field. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. But, hey, lessons learned. Yeah, let that be a lessons lesson. Lessons learned. Kids. That could have t turned the entire game around right there. So Ashland will huddle up once again. They tried the fake pitch action, but it did not pay off for Ashland. Dwinnells back to pass. Plenty of time. And he's going to air this one out, has a target, and he overthrows his intended target just by a hair, Chris Dudley. Third and ten for the clockers. Dwinnells has the arm. Just going to get out there further. He certainly does. He Got to get the accuracy down, though, on those long passes. Right. Short passes, he's... Well, yeah, He's very the, accurate. The receivers, but. too, uh, I, you know, the, you see it when the ball goes up in the air. Right. They, they have a tend to slow down because they're eyeballing where that ball's going to be instead of just keep running and hoping that it winds up in your hands. And that all comes with uh, learning. learning. You know, at this level, I expect receivers to make mistakes like that. I expect everyone to make mistakes. Exactly. And Dwinnells is going to keep this one. There he goes. Lose a couple tacklers. Upfield first down. Can he get more? And he works his way all the way to the Hiller's 40. Probably mark him back a little because that knee went down, but a first down nonetheless for Ashland. And that was on a third and 10, about a 13 yard gain there. As the clocker is marked at the 42 in Hopkinton territory. Well, Pat Dwinnell's no denying his speed and strength. He showed it off once again there. We have motion as Dwinnells takes a low snap and he'll hand it off to Dudley. Here goes Dudley on the jet sweep and he will take it up for a couple. A nice little spin move too. It certainly was and that'll make it second and about six to go for Ashland. 14 to six game here in the second quarter the Hillers found the end zone. They had a good defensive stand, and they're going to need another good defensive stand here. Dwinnells is going to line it up out of the gun. We have motion once again, and this time the Hillers' defense was ready for it, and it was a fumble. I believe it was recovered it was by down. Ashland. What a yeah. great job by Isaiah Kuruvilla just exploding in there to bring down Dudley. Yeah, it was a nice uh, six-yard loss that Hopkins liked to put on the clockers. That was uh, Liam Fleming on the carry, rather. So that moves the ball back to the 48. And that makes it... I'm not quite sure. Oh, there it is. Third down and 16 to go. As Dwinnells takes the snap, has time. He's looking to pass, going to air it out. And it is nearly intercepted. Overthrows his intended target, Dudley. He was under pressure and just really tried to get rid of it. Seamus Murphy nearly coming up with the interception. That would have been a second chance. <laughs> that brings up fourth down for Ashland. So will they go for it or are they going to kick it away? Two minute warning. All right, so two-minute warning here for the first half. I'll tell you, if the Hillers' defense can stop them here, especially if they go for it on fourth down, go you get yourself some great field position. Go for it on fourth down. For, uh, fourth down. Stop the stop the. Uh... Dwinnells can also be their punter at times as well. So we'll see what he does here. He yes. will punt it. Yeah, he's going to punt it away. Up the far side it goes. It was a nice punt. It's going to roll all the way back inside the twenty. And I think that was a smart move there by uh, Ashland to punt it away. Jake Caveney just kind of waited I know, to I uh, I tag you, the ball. Did, yeah, they definitely did it the right way because there you go. You have yourself a, uh, you had no one uh, in the backfield to uh, receive that ball. Well, you know, and that was a really smart move by Caveney. You know why he waited? Because the half was almost over. So that's why he waited. Well, uh, they just pointed. Yeah, it's an Ashland timeout. So an Ashland timeout, less than two minutes left to go in this first half. Let that be a lesson, if, uh, <laughs> you're, if you're fielding a punt 
and there's only a couple minutes left. You don't want to wait to tag that ball because you're just wasting time off the clock. That's right. Well, I mean, you know, the clockers do have uh, the advantage, so they can waste a little time. Right. Oh, Ashland doesn't mind wasting no. the time. But if you're a Hopkins and you're trying to get back in the and game. Hey, they're the clockers. they got plenty of time. That's right. They know how to manage the clock over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we are ready to continue on here with the second quarter. Ashland found the end zone twice in the first quarter. But the Hillers' defense has been very good in this second quarter, shutting out Ashland so far in the quarter. Can they continue to pitch a shutout through this quarter? Yeah, you know, Hill is going to have to step it up. They're going to have to throw the long ball. But let's go. I mean, yeah, less than two minutes to go. You're down on the 16. Go ahead, throw it. We'll see what the uh, Hillers offense has in store here. Stevens out of the gun with a back to his left. Two receivers to either side. And now they're going to switch things up, and it's going to be an empty back set. Takes the snap, and he's going nice to keep block. it. There he goes. Mm -hmm. Kuruvilla getting a good block, and he works his way up to the 25 before he's brought down by Jeff Britt. That was short of the first down. That was about a seven yard gain. Another Ashland timeout. I believe that might have been a Hillers timeout to uh, well, stop the clock. He pointed this way. So, I, I mean, it would make sense that it would be a Hillers timeout, but why is he pointing this side when it's the Ashland side? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know the teams. What's tough here is the teams are on the same side of the field. You know, and I think he pointed at the blue, but. You know, he's pointed in the direction of the ah. clock aside. So, I don't ah. know. We can't keep track of the time. <laughs> Who knows? That's not important. That's enough. It was a timeout. That's, yeah. a, that's all we know. Timeout? What is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so right I, I'd have to imagine there's about a minute and a half left in this first half. Sure. I'm with you on that. So, the Hillers are going to have to work quickly. Of course, we don't have a scoreboard or a clock in the... Time is kept by the official, Mike Whalen, who's the uh, crew chief here. Wyatt Stevens brings his offense back out, and we are ready to go. He's got Masterson to his left, two receivers either side. Takes the snap, looks to his right, throws to his right. Caravilla catches the screen. There he goes, up the far side. He has wheels, and he's brought down at around the 37-38. So a nice pick up there. And, and did he get out of bounds? That's the question to stop the clock. Yeah, and I don't know if he did because the Hillers are hurrying up to the line. So yeah, I don't that was think a nice tackle out. by Britt there. It certainly was. To, uh, and that was, yeah, just before Caravilla could get out of bounds because he was going for that sideline. And they'll clock it. And they'll bring up second down. So second and 10 for the Hillers. Time running low here in this first half. A 14-6 lead for Ashland. The Hillers would certainly love to get a quick score here. This has been a good football game, Mike. It's been a it sure has. It, yeah, it, it has not been one-sided at all. I mean, no, the, not at the all. The clockers were definitely stronger in the first quarter, but the Hillers never gave up. And, and, and the first time these two teams met, it wasn't one-sided. It started off that way, but then the Hillers had a little bit of a comeback. Sure. And I believe they, if, I can't remember the exact score, but I believe it was only a six point, seven point yeah, loss. It wasn't that bad, right. So the Hiller is going to huddle it up and get ready to go. And I'd imagine a lot of these kids probably played, played together at the uh, younger levels as well on both the Hopkins and the sure. side. Yeah, because both, both teams allow uh, people from both towns to play still. So the uh, Fighting Irish and Hopkinton has Ashland kids and the uh, Ashland Junior Clockers have Hopkins kids. Stevens takes the snap. He's under pressure. Oh. And he's going to be brought down for a loss. Bringing him to the ground was Hunter Roby. Yeah, he, he was tied up by the feet. And Hunter Roby came in and finished the job. And he has just been the ultimate threat out there for this Hiller's offense. Hopkins in quick back up to the line. That clock's still running. Takes the snap. Back to pass. Stevens looking downfield. He's going to roll to his left. and. Try to take it himself, does get out of bounds at around the 43, uh, 42 rather. Well, that'll help stop the clock. I wonder how much time. 21 seconds left. 
21 seconds to go. Good thing I can read lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did study that, didn't you? Yes, I did. I was in junior college back in the 80s. That's why I have to be careful uh, what I say even when you're not in the room. You got that right. I can see everything. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> why it's Stevens comes back out to the huddle. Hillers, they're going to have to try a couple long plays here to get into the end zone before the half comes to an end. Stevens going to line it up with Masterson to his right. We have motion, a Seamus Murphy in motion. He'll trips go right. over to the right side. So trips receiver on the right side. It's going to be a pitch to Masterson. There he goes, trying to work his way up the far side. Not a whole lot of room there. Unless Yard or a two. Timeout call. This should be the last play. Yeah. And I believe. I believe there was a timeout called because they are uh, marking the ball down. So yep. timeout was called to stop the clock. That probably took about seven oh or no, eight it's seconds it's off. Changed. It was, uh, it's first down, so it's four. That's right, it's first down, so they changed. They had to stop the clock. Oh, turnover on downs. Turnover on downs. Lost track of that. So now Ashland has a chance to take a shot for the end zone. Dwinnell's in at quarterback. Looking upfield under pressure. He's going to roll to his left, try to take it up the sideline, and he's pushed out of bounds. And that should do it there. And that will bring up second down for Ashland. I believe that might have been the last play of the half, too. Let's see what see the officials the say. Off. He might have one more, a uh, few was more seconds. Bounds? Yeah, it looked he like was he was out of bounds, out. yeah. yeah. He did get out, so there might be a few more seconds left on the clock. And okay, uh, was that a timeout? Well, yeah, that's a timeout. The hat did not come off. So they got the timeout call in. Well, I said the so, ball. so I wonder if he got out of bounds. Yeah, he had to get, yeah. But the um, halftime, the ball goes up, right? And the end of the game, the hat comes off? Well, the other way around, I can't remember. Sometimes they don't do it at all. That's why I notice filming these uh, games, yeah. doing the editing. It depends who's uh, officiating, yeah. really. We'll see which way he goes. Some refs make it very clear it's the end of the quarter or end of the half, but some don't. Well, the wind is starting to pick up here as the sun is dropping down, and we got a big cloud uh, mass that's going to go in front, and it's yeah, the temperatures, temperatures starting to drop. Right. I might have to go get my jacket. It's going to get a little uh, wintry over the next few days and rainy. Yeah, it's going to be nasty. Good thing we got this in. Today, though, not so bad. Today, I, I'll take this every day. Absolutely. Ashlyn huddles up and is ready to go. I expect him to take a long shot. Yeah, I mean, this has got to be the last play of the half. Right. He has trips receivers on the left side. And now it's an empty back set. Dwinnells takes the snap under pressure. Can he elude the tacklers? No, he can't. Hiller's defense all over him. And it was Caravilla bringing him to the ground. And that'll do it for the first half of play. A great job by the Hiller's defense in that second quarter. And after one half of play, it's Ashland 14, the Hiller's six. Pretty fun stuff for that first half, Mike. I tell you, it was very exciting. I mean, the, the clock has started strong. They came out, and you're going to say, oh, boy, is it going to be that kind of game? But, man, the Hillers did not give up, and they came back hard to fight. And here they are. What is it, six points? What's the score? 14 to 6. 14 to and six, the Hillers, I believe, receive in the second half. They so. do, because they deferred. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to take a timeout. Second half coming up next. It's Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text? Just this 
once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkeys see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. Welcome back to Hopkins at High School. We're on field three for the last regular season game for Hopkinton Middle School football, the first season ever of Hopkinton Middle School football. And it has been a fun season to follow, certainly a lot of good talent on the roster. Tom Nappy alongside Mike Terosian, John Ritz on camera. And we forgot to wish everyone a happy Halloween, Mike. Happy Halloween today. Happy Red Sox Day today. We had the big parade in Boston. John Ritz was supposed to tell me all about it, but he never made it. <laughs> and this is going to be, it looks like, almost the onside kick attempt here. Yeah. And it is fielded and brought to about the 35. It was a good roll by it, Dwinnells. It had the onside roll, but it was, had the distance of a squibber. Well, I think that was almost, <laughs> yeah, it was a, I think that was almost intentional there. Yeah. You wanted the onside effect, but you didn't want the Hillers to get really good field position. So Hopkinton starts the second half off with the ball, and they got a big opportunity to try to get back into this game. So we'll see what they we'll see have in they store here. Off, yeah. yeah, you know, I, I still I still see one at least one more trick play. I mean, they tried the double reverse. Let's see if he's got another, uh, you know, throwing a little Statue of Liberty or something in there to uh, to, to turn their momentum around. Well, Wyatt Stevens in that quarterback. You got Isaiah Carew Villa out there, and I think that might be his uh, big target here in this uh, second half. Takes the snap, and he'll hand it off. And that's Christian Pereira not going very far. Taking him to the ground was Patrick Deslauriers. Pereira must be the smallest kid on that team. But I tell you, the kid has power. He can move his legs. He can. He has speed, too. So that brings up second down and... About 11 to go for the Hillers. Small loss on that last rush attempt. Stevens goes back out to his huddle. And he's going to line it up with a back to his right. And a pair of receivers each side. Takes the snap, throws the screen to Curuvilla. Here comes Isaiah Curuvilla, eludes one tackler. And he's going to take it up to about the 40 before he's brought down. So a gain of a few yards there. About two or three. Yeah. It looked like uh, P.J. Kassane with the uh, with the primary tackle. Cravella's uh, a little slow getting up there. He's, he's yeah, a little he's shaken up. Coach Webb is taking him off the field. He'll be helped off the field. Certainly hope he's okay. Always hate to see kids yeah. get hurt at this stage. Yeah, it's stinger. It's a little cold out there now. I was just... Uh, right. I was just down at field level at halftime uh, talking to some of the uh, parents, and it was uh, it was a little colder down there. I think we're doing better off up here. Up on top of the press box here at David Hughes Stadium. Yeah, and it's certainly uh, nice to see them playing on this field today. Getting the experience. You're on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Stevens gonna line it up out of the gun with a back to his right, pair receivers each side. Motion from right to left, Seamus Murphy will motion over to the left side. Takes the snap, and he's gonna keep this one. There he goes, Stevens going to take it for a first down and a bit more, eluding a couple of tacklers. He fumbled the football and Ashland has it. Oh, tough break for the Hillers. The ball was recovered by Cam and Tunick. Oh yeah, and he's he's got a sting in there. He's holding his elbow. Yeah, he went down to the ground like hard top. too. Yeah, looks like uh, yeah, another stinger there. Get another ice pack there from the trainer. It looks like. Certainly hope he's okay. As Ashlyn will bring their offense out. Fumble recovery. Well, it's been cold the last few days. That ground isn't the softest. It's been. Right. Pat Dwinnell set to lead his offense. Go, 
Back to his right, pair of receivers each side. And it looks like we're gonna get a timeout. I think some confusion on the Ashland offense. Timeout on the field, we're in the third quarter. It's Ashland 14, Hopkinton six. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. A gun. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love HCAM. Hey, I'm watching the uh, camp. We love HCAM. And I volunteer for HCAM TV. I watch HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. We love HCAM TV. Off the timeout, the clockers are set to go. First down for Ashland as Dwinnells takes the snap. He's going to keep this one. Here he goes up the near side, eluding a couple tackles, pushes his way forward through a number of defenders. The first down and a bit more. There's a flag down. Was there a hold? I'm guessing there had to be some kind of hold on the offense since the uh, mustard is in the backfield. And it looks like this one's coming back. And it will. So I guess it's coming after the play? Yeah, it was a, I thought there was a hold somewhere. I thought that's what that's the call so was, but. They haven't made the call for the hold. They just pointed at being on the offense. So they have my back 10, so there is yeah. your hold. Yeah, there's a clear hold, so. Let's see if uh, we get it from uh, Ref Whalen. All right, so Ashland marched back to about the 38. And where are they moving the chains? Are they moving the chains back? Oh, oh they got the chains. They got to pull the chains. The chain, they, they I think the, the chain chains. gang's a little confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they just want to hang out together, and uh, there we go. There we go. They're getting that straightened out. Referee's got this. So this is going to make it a first and 20. Right, there you go. Mucho better. Uh, I still got to move the chains down a little bit, though. Yeah, I, you know what? Close enough. <laughs> Dwayne Ellis is going to hand it off. Run up the middle. The Hiller's defense ready for it. Getting the initial rap was Tommy Chatton, followed up by Devin Canty. And on I the heard of Hiller's. That was Liam Fleming on the rush attempt. Second down and long for Ashland. Can the Hillers defense make a big stop? They've done it a couple times today. They've kept Winnells at bay. They haven't really let him dominate games like he has throughout much of the season. This Hillers defense has played very well as Dwinnells takes the snap, hands it off, and oh. a big hit there. That's a helmet tackle, yeah. but... Uh, that was Fleming carrying it. I think it was his hands that hit his helmet. Uh, it was Frankie and Cutto on the hit. Yeah, he definitely did not grab that face mask. He just no. grabbed that helmet. Yeah, that was just uh, a hand to parents, the head. Yeah, parents below us yelling, not liking that call. But it wasn't bad. I mean, the kid, no. I mean, if the kid held on to that face mask, he, well, yeah, no, that would have been really The bad. running back put his head down, yeah. and the defender never really got down, but he just stuck his hand out. It was sure. a hit. It wasn't... It wasn't a grab of the face mask or anything like that. Dwinnell's back to pass. He's under pressure. Here comes a couple of Hillers defenders. He's going to take it to the near side. Airs it out. Has a target. And it is caught. Wow. What a oh catch. Boy. Jake Caveney somehow reeling that in. Had two defenders right with him. And he reels it in. That was unbelievable. That's yeah. Litcher, Litcher just can't believe that he held wow. on to that ball. And he was covered. He was covered well. That's the catch of the day right there by Jake Caveney for Ashland. Stop and shot play of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so the clockers in business. They move up in Ehlers territory. Dwinnell's set to go with a back to his left. It's Fleming to his left. Now we'll line up behind him. Oh, we'll and here we he wow. goes up the middle and he'll push further into Hopkinton territory, and that's enough for a first down. On the stop was Paul Lisher. 
Or is it a second down? It's very close to the first down, but just not no, quite enough. Uh, it I don't. I don't know. I, these these uh, <laughs> lines been a moving so much. I can't tell. <laughs> it's very close it, though. Well, it looks like <laughs> second and three right now. All right, here we go. Dwinnell's going to line up with a back to his right, pair of receivers each side. Takes the snap, he'll hand it off, and it's an end around. Chris Dudley on the sweep up the far side, into the end zone, touchdown Ashland. Well that was about a, I want to say a 15 yard touchdown run there by yeah, Dudley. Yeah, yeah easily uh, 15 yards. And uh, Dudley made it easy. He had plenty of space, and he just kept going wider and wider. He was going for that that uh, goal line down marker uh, as his target, and he it looked like he was like two or three feet inside of it. So he did have plenty of room. He's nice, nice wheels on that kid. So Dudley on the end around, able to get in, showing off the speed, and Ashland's going to go for two. Dwinnell's out of the gun, takes the snap. He's looking to pass here. He's going to air it to his left, and it's incomplete out of the end zone. He was looking for Jay Caveney, who had an incredible catch to extend that drive for Ashland. Yeah, there was nowhere near him. I mean, Caveney was right at the end of the end zone, and uh, he just watched it go over his head. He didn't even try for it. The score remains 20-6 to six in favor of Ashland. Clockers will... Kick off. Hopefully uh, everyone can still see the game so well. How's it looking there, John? Because right, we got the sun right about almost camera height yes. right now. And so it'll be shining in our eyes uh, real soon. Uh, we're not used to this. We're not used to this daytime stuff. Right. Especially uh, uh, on the other field. Daytime here at Field 3 at least. Yeah. Field 1, it's fine. It's on your back and it looks great. But, you know, good thing John Ritz. He's an old pro at this stuff here, and uh, he's able to keep the action in frame. Well, he's one of those guys that can just stare at the sun and has no problem as well. <laughs> he's an outdoorsy kind of guy. It doesn't matter. <laughs> cold. He likes it. He likes it colder weather. He hates. So far, he's only had one game here that it was kind of cold. Everything else, he was like practically in shorts. It was balmy out. He doesn't like that. He likes to be in the miserable weather. Well, he's the best in the business. Oh, we got a mustard and in the backfield. Yeah, here. that's going to be a legal procedure. That ball went out of bounds on the kickoff. So they'll kick it again, this time from five yards further back. Well, you got to keep those kickoffs up the middle. Or that's you're it. Get up those the illegal middle. procedure calls. You know, when you're in the big leagues, you can go for the sides, but right. you can't do it here. When you can kick it out of the end zone, you can go for the sides. <laughs> so this time they'll kick it from the 35. Okay. Dwinnells does it all. He's a quarterback. Rusher, kicker, drives the team bus sometimes. Yep, yep. he's the uh, chief bottle washer. I tell you, the kid does it all. You know, more than playing both ways. 26 lead for Ash. It's been a great effort, though, by both of these teams. They're really playing hard out there. Certainly appreciate what there these kids is. have done all season long. It's been fun to watch. Good to see Wyatt Stevens back out there. He's going to return the kickoff. There he goes. Oh, he that he has wheels hole. up the near side, and he takes it out of bounds across midfield. A great return by Wyatt Stevens. Oh. <laughs> he just he just tipped the ball out to the field, and he hit the little ball boy from Ashland. <laughs> right at the top of the head. Poor kid. He's laughing, though. He thinks it's funny. <laughs> I don't think it was intentional. <laughs> Not intentional at all. He was just tossing it out there so they could get the ball into play. But, you know, I think that was a wise move for him to run out of bounds. He had nothing in front of him. It certainly and, was. Uh, no sense in him getting hurt now. He still has another whole quarter to do after this. And it's good to see him back out there. He was a little shooken up earlier, but he's ready to go. Shook it off, rubbed some dirt on it. 
He's ready to try to score some points. He's going to line it up out of the gun with a back to his left. That's Christian Pereira to his left. Trips receivers on the far side, takes the snap, rolls to his left, looking upfield. He's brought down. Nice and tackle. And that's going to be a small loss there for the Hillers. Chris it, Dudley there. Yeah. Read that play right from the start and did not give up. Yeah, nice pickup by the uh, Clockers defense. So that makes it a second down and about 14 to go. It still says first down there, but there you I'll go. There you go. Well, it. it looks like 12 now based on the <laughs> change, but you know, <laughs> we had first down and 10 in a 10 yard penalty and it was 19 yards. <laughs> it was 19 yards. So uh, yeah, it could be anything. Street rules. Street rules. <laughs> Stevens out of the gun. Takes the snap. Looks to his left. He's under a little bit of pressure. He's going to pass. Oh, Throws up field. Has a target. No. He overthrows it just a little bit. Intended target, Dan White. Oh, that one hurts. He had a wide open target. Danny was wide open, and he was hoping for that ball. Would have made him the hero of the day for these Hillers. Just trying to drop it right in the bread basket. Brings in up the bread basket. Brings up third down for the <laughs> Hillers. I think we are nearing the end of the uh, third quarter. Yeah, the clock usually goes fast in the second half for some reason. Hillers huddle up, talk things over. They are set to go. Trying to work their way upfield past this Ashland defense, trailing 20 to six. Stevens going to line it up out of the pistol. Man in the backfield, it's a pitch and he fumbles and Ashland has it. And it's gonna be Nobody returned. There he goes, Hunter that's Hunter Roby. Roby. Roby takes it all the way to the house. A defensive touchdown for Ashland. No hands, no knees on the ground. It was picked up nice and clean for a touchdown. 26 to six clockers. There goes Hunter Roby taking it to the house. What a day Roby has had. Roby, yeah, he's had a couple tackles today that were key. He's made a number of defensive in, stops. And picking up this uh, dropped ball. And I, I believe it was touched by another clocker. He kind have, of yeah, fumbled it. Was, it. it was definitely bounced. It was hard to tell from this angle, right. but uh, it definitely bounced around before he got his paws on it and ran it in clean with nobody around him. Tough break for the Hillers. Ashton will attempt two. Twin Elves huddles up his offense, and they are set to go. 26-6 to six lead, and... You know, nothing to feel ashamed about if you're the Hillers, though. They've Not played a tough game. Their defense is held strong, and their defense has been out there quite a bit in this game, and it's made two very impressive stops. And it's going to be a run up the middle into the end zone, no problem. Sure. Two-point conversion is good. That was Liam Fleming. And that'll make it 28-6, to Ashland. So the Clockers cruising along here in this third quarter. A tough turnover for the Hillers, but it's certainly been a fun game overall between these two teams. And the Hillers' defense has held strong on the last couple of Ashland drives, but certainly nothing you could do on a uh, turnover by the offense if you're that Hillers' defense. But now we'll see if the Hillers' offense can respond. We'll take a short time out. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how it can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance.
In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness, and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. Off the timeout, 28 to 6, Ashland. Fumble recovery brought to the end zone by Hunter Roby. To give Ashland the upper hand in this one. As Donnell's kicks it away, wobbly kick, and it gets some pretty good distance on it. They'll sail past the 20, there will be return. Here goes Wyatt Stevens, eluding one tackle right now, another, and he takes it out of bounds just past the 30. The official looking at the uh, time left as we are nearing the end of the third quarter. Jake McGrill on the last touch to push him out of bounds. Ball's Just hold him at the, at the 35. Ball is marked at the 35. So we'll see what the Hillers offense has in store here. Stevens goes back be real up to close. the huddle. He's, he's uh, watching that clock, so. Yep. He's uh, it's gonna be real close to the end. This might be the last play here of the quarter. Stevens gonna line it up in the gun. Back to his right, two receivers either side. It's Will Masterson, the running back. Takes the snap, rolls to his left under pressure, throws up no, field, and it's intercepted. He was looking for Seamus Murphy. It's intercepted by Chris Dudley. And he takes it up the far sideline. Ashland will have the ball. And that looks like that is. So the clockers will send their offense out. Will they have time for a play before the end of the quarter? It looks like they will. Well, yeah, for now. Oh, tough turnover there, and he threw in a double coverage. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a, I think, a bad decision that Stevens was, uh, was telling Murphy to, you know, go along, go along, because that told his coverage that, all right, the ball's coming this way, and all he had to do was position himself in front of it, and it was an automatic interception. Right, yep, gave it away. He'll learn. Yep. Dwayne Ells with the back to either side, hands it off. And what a great defensive stop there. Barreling into the backfield to bring down the ball carrier is Devin Canty. Yeah, Devin, Devin blitzed on that move and uh, it just right in there. I don't think they stood a chance to even turn before you could see him coming. I think if you're the Hillers, you gotta blitz just about every play. Put some pressure you, on this Ashland get, offense. You have to. I mean, but, you know, Ashland's doing a great job with running the ball. And, I don't know, you could just, I mean, what do you, what do, you do? Dwinnell's, yep. Dwinnell's is, is, is quick. And he sees somebody coming in from the shotgun. Well, he, all he has to do is turn left or right, and he's One thing I love about this Hiller's defense, they are covering the receivers extremely well. Yep. And they're having a very good overall game. I mean, two of the touchdowns were because of turnovers. As Dwinnell's back to pass, throws up field, and it's nearly intercepted. What a great defensive play there by Paul Lisher, who nearly picked it off. Lisher uh, could have been so close for some uh, offensive pass interference. As uh, I mean, uh, Lisher was looking for the pass interference call. Didn't get it, and I think that That is, is the end of the quarter. Yeah. Yep, right. so that'll wrap up the third quarter. After three quarters, it's Ashen 28, Hopkinton 6, fourth quarter coming up next on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. We're ready for the fourth quarter. 28-6 lead for Ashland. 
You're tuned in to Hopkins and Hiller's Middle School Football on HCAM. Tom Nappy alongside Mike Tarosh and John Ritz on camera. Uh, Dwinnell's back to pass and a great knockdown there by the defender. And getting a hand on that one was Tyler Mulvaney. Again, that was the same kind of play that uh, Kaveny could have been called for pass interference. And Mike, uh, we should probably congratulate the Hopkinton Hillers varsity golf team on winning the Division golf II team. state championship. State champs again. Yep. It was a, a field of 13 up for the Division II state championship, and the Hillers finished number one. Second straight state championship. Yeah, congratulations, Coach Bliss and the Hillers. Great job. And all the other TVL champions, you know, you have right. volleyball. Hopkins and uh, Hill of Volleyball TVL champs, and they play their first uh, round tomorrow. Empty back set. Duenell's going to take this one himself. There he goes up the near side. Around a number of defenders into the end zone with ease. There is a flag. Was there a hold? Is this one coming back? Right now, it's a touchdown. Yep, they're waving it back. But it will not count. We're going to get a hold. Against Ashland. Twinnells does make that run and look real easy. And uh, yeah, you had a little juke there by one of the defenders. Sure. But when you have a, at, at this point here, it's your fourth quarter, you would think, give it to somebody else. Yep. So we'll see what they do. Oh, yeah, the Ashland coaches don't like this call. Yeah, they certainly don't. I don't think they're going to lose all the yardage. I think it was. They did call it a touchdown. They're giving it a touchdown. Ah, okay. So it looks like they might have changed. Waylon's arms went up, and uh, Coach Gates and Coach Weber uh, not happy that that the referees were talked out of the touchdown by the Ashland coaching staff. Well, well his, his words, not mine. I think once you have a call on the field, you should stick with it, but. You stick with the call, you talk it out, and but. So any in any case. Again, not life and death here. This is middle yep, school football. That's right. That's right. It's all for fun. I've just never seen a call change like that before. Not like that. <laughs> no, no. 34 to 6 is the score. They're going to go for two. I mean, granted, it was the far side ref. So you know there was something in the back. And just like any good play like that, it's always some kind of block in the back or hold that calls it back. Well, I think actually what the officials must have decided is the hold was away from the ball carrier. Because the flag was on the far side of the field as the right. two-point conversion is good right. by was, Dudley. Was it was it the end on the left side right. hanging up with, with somebody else that just, yeah, so, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. So I think what the Ashland coaches probably pointed out is, hey, the hold you called was on the left side. It wasn't where the ball carrier is. That's Didn't affect not, the play at all. Right. But, yeah. And I'm sure, and that's, that's what uh, uh, the Hilla coaching staff was in a huge disagreement about. Well, I mean, they didn't seem to contest too much, or maybe they did, but I don't blame them. Oh, because yeah, they were, they were just upset that they were... That it was changed, it. right. <laughs> like anybody else, you don't want your call changed. No. I don't want my call changed. Not not without a video review or something no, like that. No. and uh, <laughs> we don't have that here yet. It's coming. It's coming soon. To a TV station near you. T ten, <laughs> 10, 15 years. <laughs> uh. A 36-6 lead for Ashland. But um, I'll tell you, Mike, it's been a lot of fun watching this Hillers Middle School team. Uh, they have uh, some talent out there. They also seem to really enjoy playing the game. Uh, the sense I get is these players just have a blast out yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, nobody's giving up. You know, usually at this level here, you know, you get upset like, hey, you are down 30 points or whatever. It these doesn't matter. Here, they, they You're get, here like, to learn. You get the little cheap shots because people get upset. What this, is, this isn't happening here. These kids just want to play football. They love being out on this field. That's right. Yeah, certainly a great experience for him. And there goes player number 12 off the field. <laughs> Real quick, <laughs> before the whistle blew. <laughs> yeah, good thing they noticed. Yeah. Now Dwinnell's set to kick it away. And Sends this one kick. sailing. That's a good kick there. Great Back to kick. Stevens. Be returned from the 20. 
Here goes Stevens, and he takes it to about the 34. Good tackle there by uh, Jeff Britt. Miller's offense will come out and see if they can get something brewing. We're in the fourth quarter. And uh, starting to get a little dark here on yeah. uh, field three. I no longer have my Winter's uh, coming. I, Winter I don't have is coming. The, the, the sun went down below the trees. That's where the uh, temperature drops an extra five degrees. And uh, the wind is starting to pick up. We have, uh, I, I was able to put my roster down. I've been holding it up over my eyes because my, my visor can't block that sun being so low. Yeah. So. The trick-or-treaters will be out soon. Yeah. We got to be, uh, watch out tonight as you're on those roads. That's right. It's that time of year. Yeah. Here comes the Hiller's offense set to go. Stevens in at quarterback, takes the snap. He's going to air this one out. Oh, it's a long. good pass. And that is nearly caught. What a defensive play that was. He was looking for Paul Lischer. And it was a good throw. Very well thrown ball, but breaking up the action, that was Adrian Bremenkamp. Lischer knows he should have had it, and he's very upset with himself. He's probably more upset to, with himself than anybody else is with him. Right. So that brings up second and 10 for the Hillers, and this is what you should do at this stage of the game. Take some shots downfield. Take field. some shots. You Have know, some fun out it. there. Right. Try something fun. Throw the ball. But I was impressed with how well that ball was thrown for sure. As Stevens enters the game along with Devin Canty. And we must be... Uh, Maybe getting towards the end of uh, action here in this fourth quarter with the official checking the time. It could also just be the play clock as well. Set to take the snap. Takes the snap. Looks up field. Uh -oh. Under Changes pressure. Line. Eludes the pressure. Up the far side. He'll throw as a target. That's hauled in. Seamus Murphy with a big reception across midfield. Yeah, I like it. I like his... Uh Reception, spin, stiff arm. Great, great move. It certainly was. Way to keep the play alive there. And then Seamus Murphy able to get open. You do that a couple times and we're talking touchdown. Yeah. That's all. A couple more times. So the Hillers huddle up, talk things over. We are set to continue on in this fourth quarter of action. It's been a well-played game out there by both teams. We've seen some uh, great play on both sides of the ball right. this afternoon. Steven's going to line it up with um, Canty to his left. Two receivers to either side. Takes the snap, bobbles it a little bit. He's able to pick it up and eludes one tackler, and then he'll just dive to the ground. Probably a smart move there, avoiding the hit. Hillers will uh, maybe have to tighten up the protection a little bit to give Steven some time. We'll take it back over to the coach and get the play call. And we're set to go here on this second down situation. Big reception from Stevens to Seamus Murphy extended this drive for the Hillers. Now we'll see if they can turn it into points here in this fourth quarter. Stevens is out of the gun. Takes the snap. He's going to pitch it. Here comes Canty. Canty has some strength and speed, but he's brought down after a short gain. Making the stop was Chris Dudley. Third down for the Hillers, and about 11 to go. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit here at field three. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly. Wish I brought my coat. 
that two sweatshirts would be enough. They'll teach me. Yeah, there you go. Always got to have your coat here. You never know when the wind's going to come in. Mm -hmm. Takes the snap. Looking upfield. Has time. Throws upfield. That's caught at the 30-yard line. What a catch. And reeling it in for the reception. That was Tommy Chatton. And we do have an injured player down here in this fourth quarter. So with the score 36 to six and an injured player on the field, we'll take a timeout. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it, to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Continuing on in the fourth quarter, an injured player for the Hillers. Jeremy Restifo. Jimmy Restifo, we certainly hope he's okay. He took a tough hit. I believe he was on the line and took a pretty big hit there, but hopefully he's okay. As Stevens takes the snap, looking up oh, field, and hit. that is an incomplete pass. His arm was going forward. Sure was. Ball came out. That's uh, that's almost like a tuck rule situation yeah. almost. <laughs> <laughs> pretty close, you're right. So an incomplete pass, and that'll bring up second down for the Hillers. Stevens comes back out to the huddle. And don't forget, coming up in the next few weeks, we'll have all kinds of playoff action for Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Sports. Boys and girls soccer, volleyball, football, all in the postseason. Wide open receiver, and it's caught. It was Tommy Chatton reeling it in. I think it bounced and and after. I, yeah. I think they're going to mark him in. Incomplete. They're going to say he never had possession. Mike, Mike Webb is arguing at his point. No, nope, he's uh, giving instruction. Yeah, definitely. So that was knocked out of his hand. So that was a pass breakup by the defender and a very good pass breakup. So that was right in his hands. Just couldn't uh, get the hold on it. I believe that was Kevin Ramirez who broke that one up. So it brings up third down for the Hillers. I'm gonna stay up to date with the latest playoff situations for Hiller Sports. Tune into oh, our website, hcam.tv. Throw to the far side, and did the receiver oh. make that catch? No, I hit the ground. Oh, looks like he was not able to get there, but he, it was a nice job. Great by, effort. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he ran it. Great effort, but uh, yeah, it did hit the ground. Ball was thrown under pressure. Murphy tried to curl back in and make the catch. I thought he got hit again when he threw it. I believe he did, yep. Ashland's putting the pressure on, that's for sure. Three minutes? Three minutes remaining in the game. So time running a little bit low here in this fourth quarter. Stevens out of the pistol with the back to his right. Two receivers either side set to take the snap. Hands it off. Oh. A big hit there. Oof. I got to give credit to Christian Pereira. He got right back up. He took that like a champ. That kid's tough. <laughs> Pereira, he's taking some big hits tonight. And every time, he just gets right back up. And he seems to be okay, getting some love from his teammates. 
You know, it's a, one thing I always say, Mike, it's tough at this level because there's such size differences. When you get to the varsity high school level, yeah, there's size differences, but not right. even close to as many right. as you get in middle school football. Sure. Trainer uh, just checking in on him, seeing if he's all right. But in any case, we're going to get a timeout called by Hopkinton. 36 to 6 is the score. We'll take a timeout as well. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this week? once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkeys see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. Continuing on in this fourth quarter, off the timeout. Starters in there for some reason still for Ashland. It's going to be a run up the middle. A couple yards there which is nice to see it right out the middle. Yeah, and this is what they should do right now. I mean, you're up big. Get the backups in there. Get everybody in the game. Run yep. the ball. There's a lot of clean shirts on that sideline. Get them dirty. Yep, exactly. And it looks like he's starting to sub some people in now, yeah. but we've got a couple minutes left in the fourth quarter. In any case, yeah, anyhow. it's been a fun season covering Hopkinton Middle School football. I'm sure we'll do it again next year. Yep, I'd like to uh, thank the coaching staff, uh, Michael Webb, uh, Kenny Gates and uh, Ed Flannery over there, who uh, Michael, Michael Weber was uh, nice enough to uh, get this started, get us uh, broadcasting the games. Yeah, we certainly had a lot of fun uh, broadcasting this team. And there's some talent to look out for at the high school level next year. I'll certainly be looking for some of these names. A run up the middle, a couple yards there. Two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Ashland trying to run the clock down. And they should certainly be uh, happy with the victory they got here today. Oh, sure. Definitely well there. They played very, very well. I'll tell you, my player of the game, it's got to go to Hunter Roby. Definitely Hunter Roby, without a doubt. The, uh, the key tackles. The pick. Uh, well, the, the uh, fumble, recovery fumble recovery brought back for a was, touchdown. Was huge, which basically sealed um, the fate of the Hillers today. Ashland ready to go, letting the clock run down as much as possible. Dwinnell's going to hand it off. Up the middle, eluding one tackler, and picking it up, uh, uh, picking up enough for the first down was Cam Antunic. Take it down by a, well, I gotta give a shout out to Pete Masso. Heard of Hillers. Pete Masso, a long time voice of Hiller football here at uh, Chick Welch Field before it was named David Hughes Stadium. Good old Chick Welch Field. See, it's, yeah. the stadium is the stadium. The field is this whole complex up here and that's Chick Welch Field. This stadium here is in the uh, track, the Scanlon track. They name each piece. I, I'm hoping to get a goalpost named after me some year. <laughs> well, the press box. Maybe they'll name the press box after right. me. <laughs> or the Porter <laughs> John. <laughs> Thank you, John Ritz, on camera. <laughs> now we know why we don't give him a microphone. <laughs> and Tunic takes it up the nearest side, a few yards there, and that should just about do it. Yep. I mean, Ashley could pretty much burn the rest of the clock. They might need to snap it one more time. If they wanted to, they could probably take the victory formation. But I'd like to thank uh, John Ritz for doing camera. Except for Great that job comment. as always. Yeah, camera's okay. I, I thank him heavily for that comment. I don't like that comment. I loved it. I think it was the comment of the day. So Ashley will take a knee, and that's going <laughs> to do it. The Clockers defeat the Hillers 36-6. to But again, it's not about who wins, who loses. This is, this is about having fun. This is about learning. This is about fundamentals and really just learning the game of football. And I feel like this season, this Hopkinton Middle School team, they got a lot of lessons and they certainly learned a lot. And they certainly developed as the season went on, Mike. Right. I mean, I, I got to see the first two games 
uh, here personally. I got to watch the films as I edited the footage. And now I get to see their last game. And you can see the improvements all the way through. So they have nothing to hang their heads low about today. Uh, you know, the scores, are, uh, it's just a number. But they played with their hearts. They all played well. Nobody gave up. All right, well, for John Ritz, my broadcast partner, Mike Terosian, I'm Tom Nappy. That's going to wrap up Hopkinton Middle School football coverage. Take care. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a good day, folks.